Okay, so angular speed versus linear speed. This is less than 8.1c. In box one, I'm going to give you some formulas. So here we go. First formula I'd like to give you is the formula for angular speed. Angular speed, often denoted by omega, lowercase omega, is equal to a change in theta. So how much did the angle change over a change in time? Now, typically you will see this in like radians per second or radians per minute or radians per hour. You might see degrees per hour. Okay, so this is just an example. This is not always radians per second. Okay, change in angle over change in time. Linear speed. Now, let me just be clear that we are talking about speeds that are traveling in a circular motion. So linear speed, often denoted as velocity, but we're not really doing velocity because we're not taking vectors into account, is the change in distance over the change in time. Um, now, usually on a circle, we would call the distance the arc length, which would be the letter S, but I, I think that's just extra stuff. It's not really that necessary. So this could be something like miles per hour. Know what I mean? So miles in the top, hours in the denominator, miles per hour. Okay, so that's measuring a distance in a line, like I could measure it with a ruler. Okay, so they're different in what you're measuring, angles versus lines. Okay, all right, so some, some, imp, some information to know. If I say RPMs, that means revolutions per minute. I could also say RP. S, right, right, or RPH, or RPD, revolutions per day, okay? So per means divide, okay? All right, so that's RPM. That's a pretty normal way to measure something that's spinning in revolutions per minute, okay? Um, something to note when dealing with angular speed, um, one revolution is equal to two pi radians. So I'm gonna write rads to indicate radians, okay? One revolution in terms of linear is the circumference of the circle, two pi times r, the radius. So get the difference between rads and radius. You know they're the same measure, right? But one's in feet and one's in radians okay um also one radian equals one length of the radius sometimes that's useful to know a couple more things to do i'm actually going to write some other stuff in this other window because you see i'm running out of space hopefully you have space um some other conversions there's 5280 feet in one mile um you know how many yards are in a foot right okay just checking um how many, feet are in a how many feet are in a yard yes yeah we don't know how many yards are in a foot like a third of a yard anyways uh let's see what else you know 60 seconds in a minute you know that one uh let's see what else what else, what else? there might be some other ones that pop up if they pop up we'll put them in the spots okay yeah, we're not doing that one. Okay, you're just showing off. Okay, so a um, couple other things I want to put in here. What we're going to be doing is instead of trying to use formulas all the time, we're going to perform a dimensional analysis. So we're going to do a little example problem in this last little space in your window number one. Okay, but I got to come over here to window number two. Okay, so when you're going to perform a dimensional analysis, Here's what you're going to do. You're going to be given 
some ratio in dimensions. I'll wait till you're ready. So you start with a given ratio of some sorts of dimension. Usually it's like some dimension over time or something like that. So a ratio of dimensions or units, if you'd rather, like for example, five miles per hour, and you're going to multiply times one as many times as you have to, to convert to the desired ratio of dimensions. And so we'll do a little sample, okay? So let's do this sample. Let's say that I want to take five miles per hour and I want to convert that to feet per second. So I start with five miles per hour and I want to get rid of miles. I want to convert miles to feet and I want to convert hours to minutes. So wait, we're going to do five miles for one hour. Now my desire is to have seconds in the denominator feet in the numerator. <coughs> so I want to get rid of miles. So what I'll do is put one mile in the denominator and introduce feet, 5,280 feet. Now does that equal one? 5,280 feet divided by one mile, that's one, right? Right, okay. So that gets rid of miles and then introduces the dimension of feet into my numerator. Now I just need to get seconds in my denominator. Okay, so let's get rid of one hour. I don't want hours. How many seconds are in an hour? Seconds. There's 3,600 seconds in an hour. Maybe we'll write that one down. Okay, so one hour is 3,600 seconds. Now, does that also equal one? Yeah, one hour equals 3,600 seconds. So that allows me to get rid of that dimension. So there's our analysis. We're just converting it to feet per second. So somebody multiply that out. Five, just make a fraction, five times 5280 divided by 3600, and give me the approximate feet we're traveling per second. Mm -mm. 7.3 ish, right? So we'll go approximate because we're rounding. So that's 7.3 feet per second we'd have to travel to go five miles per hour. This is what we consider a dimensional analysis. Okay? Questions? You get the gist? We're converting from one ratio of dimensions to another ratio of dimensions by consistently introducing the number one or a value of one, okay, in multiple ratios until we get the dimensions we desire. Okay, so we're gonna go to box two. Mm, I think I'm gonna have to go to just a new page here. So now I'm in box two and I'm going to, I don't want that. Okay, so that's some old information. Okay, so here's the problem. So I'm gonna give you a problem, okay? The problem is this, a Ferris wheel. Okay, Ferris wheel. takes 28 seconds to complete a revolution. Yes. Can I just say a rev? Okay. The radius is 25 feet not two feet, 25 feet. So this is my information. I have a Ferris wheel. My board is thinking and not doing a very good job. Come on, draw a circle. Whatever. 
You guys got it? Draw a circle. I'm just going to draw a circle and call it a day. Has a radius of 25 feet. So you know the little cars are out here on the edge of a Ferris wheel. Here's the center of rotation. Okay? This is what we know. It's 28 seconds to complete a revolution. Now, usually when we organize that information, we put time in the denominator. That's usually it. So we could say one revolution equals 28 seconds. Okay? That's it for box two. Let's move on to box three. So in box three, here's the question. What is the angular speed of a, can we call it a little car? I don't know what they call thing, the little, a chair, seat, seat. Yeah, you sit in a seat when you're on a Ferris wheel, right? What is the angular speed of this of a seat in radians per minute? So look, I'm looking for angular speed. So that's change in theta over change in time, which is why I want radians per minute. So what do we know? We know this. There's one revolution in 20, every 28 seconds. So we know it's doing more than two revolutions per minute, right? But how many? But how many? That's what we have to figure out. Okay, so we're trying, we're desiring rads per minute. That's what we desire. So we need to convert all of this into radians. So we want to get rid of revs and introduce something that a revolution is equal to in radians. So one rev is two pi radians, okay? That allows me to remove this dimension and introduce radians into my numerator. So now I've dealt with radians. All I now have to do is introduce minutes into the denominator and get rid of seconds in the denominator. So what conversion will allow me to do that? 60 seconds is equals a minute. So that's times one again. That allows me to remove the dimensions of seconds. And now I have rads per minute. So all I have to do is plug this into my calculator. 2 pi times 60 divided by 28 and you're going to give me an approximate value, and that's gonna tell me how many rads per minute, or how many radians per minute. 13.5-ish, okay? I think it was four, six, we'll just round it to five. So that's definitely more than two full revolutions per minute. So that's angular speed, and we just converted it into the dimensions that we wanted. So that was box three. Questions? Moving on to box four. Linear speed. Okay, so this is our linear speed box. So here's what I want to know. What speed is the seat is a seat, a seat on the Ferris wheel, it doesn't matter, traveling in miles per hour. There's some conversions we're going to have to do. So now we have to introduce another measure that we have to remember from our Ferris wheel because now we're traveling a linear distance, right? So we need to introduce a linear measure. And the only one we have is 25 feet, right? So well, let's start again with what we know. It was doing one rev every 28 seconds. And, oh yeah, but it's not very big maybe. 
or maybe it is. It's super fast. Maybe it's maybe it's flinging people to the everywhere. I just found this problem online and thought it was a good one. So we'll just go with it. We'll just go with it. That's a daredevil Ferris wheel. Okay. So we want to convert seconds to hours, right? Here's what we want. Miles per hour. That's what we want. So we need to convert this information, introduce some kind of linear measure, and change seconds to minutes. So here's what we want. First, let's get rid of one rev. So one revolution in a linear speed. Okay? So remember now we're introducing, instead of measuring radians, we're measuring circumference. Right? So we're going to be 2 pi times our radius, which is? 25 feet. So now we've introduced our linear measure. We needed that from our picture, right? That's the circumference of one revolution, seat on the edge of our Ferris wheel. Okay, so that gets rid of revs. So now we're either converting feet to miles or we're converting seconds to hours. It doesn't matter which one we choose. So let's get rid of, let's go seconds to hours, right? So 3,600 seconds is equivalent to one hour. That gets my hour in the denominator where I want it and re removes the dimension of seconds. So now we have our denominator, fin fit well, a denominator dimension figured out. Let's convert feet to miles. So we want miles to be in the top, right? One mile is 5,280 5, feet. That allows us to remove the dimension of feet. And we now have miles per hour. And so we're going to type in to our a big fraction, 2 pi times 25 times 3,600 divided by 28 times 5,280. So that's going to take a little bit of time. 3.82? Mm, I have 3.82. So let's get some verification. You did 2 pi times 25 times 3,600. 2 pi, you 2 pi, 2 times pi, same thing. When you type it in. Okay, if you're going to not type this in as a fraction with your calculator, you have to do this with parentheses. 2 pi times 25 times 3,600 divided by 28 times 5,280. If you're going to not type it in as a fraction, you have to do that. So what do we get? I 3.82 miles per hour. So I don't know that that's really that fast. I can walk that fast. But there you have it. So tomorrow what you're going to be doing is I'm going to give you 40 different problems of these types. Some of them are more complex, and you're going to have to pick 10. Got it? So this is the distance be difference between angular speed. I'm going to say one more thing. Your homework tonight, grade your homework from last night, and write a summary telling me the difference between, tell me you understand the difference between angular speed and linear speed, and telling me how to perform a dimensional analysis. Those, that's your summary. I'm telling you what I want. Tell me the difference between linear speed, angular speed, and explain how to perform dimensional analysis.